on episode 419 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Josh Axe and discuss his book, The Collagen Diet. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 419. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness. The 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Did you know we have a Facebook group? We sure do. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group, and that will take you to our Facebook group where you can ask to join. It's a really cool group. We have weekly challenges, and I'm always trying to share the best information on health and fitness for people over the age of 40. So join us at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash group. Hope to see you there today. Our guest today needs little introduction. His name is Dr. Axe, and he is a best-selling author. He's been featured on programs all over, including Dr. Oz, um, and he has one of the most popular health and fitness sites on the internet. Today, we're going to talk about his book, The Collagen Diet. With no further ado, here's Dr. Axe. Dr. Axe, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Hey, Alan. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. I'm really excited to talk about your book, The Collagen Diet, because I, I recognize, you know, collagen is this kind of resource. And I think at one point, doctors or, or specialists or experts or gurus or whoever they were, uh, they made it pretty clear. Once you've burned through your knee cartilage, once you've used up that, that, that resource that's there, you're pretty much done and you can't rebuild the cartilage. But they're finding now uh, that with proper diet and appropriate movement patterns, you can, in fact, improve your cartilage and improve your body in ways that we didn't know was possible. And your book gets into that, which is, I think, the, the science is coming up now. The things we're learning are just so exciting. Yeah, it is. You know, I think for me, one of the things that I keep hearing is from patients I've worked with in the past and people today is that they notice the difference when they start working on their collagen. Now, whether it be they're taking supplements that support their body's own collagen production or a collagen supplement, or just drinking bone broth, which is really the first thing that I started to do that I had my patients do in the past that, you know, I, I've recommended so many supplements and superfoods over the years, but the one that people kept coming back to me saying, wow, I noticed a dramatic difference in my health really, really had to be collagen. Now, there are other things as well. I think there are certain herbs and spices and vegetables and probiotics that, and sometimes omega-3. So there are things that people can notice a big difference with. But for me personally, in my own gut health and joint health, I noticed a really big difference in collagen. So I'm always excited to talk about collagen. You know, I wrote a book on the topic, but, you know, I'd love to talk about today anything related to, you know, how collagen or, you know, collagen, but also those other superfoods that support collagen production, how they can help our health. Absolutely. My wife has been having some issues with her knees. And so she's, she's been dealing with the doctors and doing the, the basic things that I think people our age, over 50 anyway, start to do with their knees is, you know, you get it scoped and then you, you, know, you go back in and they're going to do the little shots. And then she went this last time and the doctor gave her a prescription or not prescription so much. He gave her some collagen, sold her some collagen and said, you know, you need to be using this. Now she felt it helped. She hasn't been on it long-term, I think going on now two and a half months, but it's, so she's taking it, having a little less, a little less problems, but just the other benefits that she's getting from the collagen. She's like, my hair is growing and feeling so much better. My, my fingernails are in my skin. They're just so much healthier now than they were before I started this protocol. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, my I've noticed the same thing. My wife and I joke around how fast and our fingernails grow and how thick and strong our hair is right now. My my wife is pregnant. She's due here in April. And congratulations. Um, Oh, hey, thanks so much. Yeah. And so we were just talking last night, but she was just saying, even I mean, even through pregnancy, I mean, she just feels really, really good. And both of us eat a really good diet. But when she started taking collagen and consuming bone broth and these collagen superfoods, I mean, she really noticed a difference in her skin, hair, and nails. I mean, it, it is the number one ingredient if somebody's looking to improve their overall beauty as well. You know, a lot of times people today are using these sort of outside in products. You know, it's maybe it's hyaluronic acid for the skin or moisturizers, essential oils. And I recommend all those things and think they're fantastic. 
But at the same time, if somebody really wants to see the biggest difference they possibly or or maximize the difference they see in their beauty, collagen is definitely the number one supplement. You know, this is kind of a shocking statistic. Once you reach the age of 25 years old, your body produces less collagen every year. By the time people are in their 50s, their own body produces 75% less collagen in their 50s than they did in their 20s. And so that's why it's even more important because our own body is producing less. It's so important that we supplement collagen into our diet. And I had somebody ask me recently, Alan, they said, hey, is collagen a fad? And I said, collagen isn't really a fad. It's one of the oldest superfoods that we were getting in our diet. Think about this. Our ancient ancestors all consume bone broth, which is 90% collagen. It's, it's pure collagen. That's what bone broth is. And we aren't getting bone broth in our diet today. And therefore, we're essentially missing a macronutrient. Think about this. There actually are no essential carbohydrates. There are essential fatty acids and there are essential amino acids. There's also something called a conditionally essential amino acids. Now, the amino acids you're going to find in collagen are considered more conditionally essential. They're not always considered. But this being said, though, they are essential. We need them to be healthy. And the big thing to think about with this, if you're missing in your diet a macronutrient, okay, like for instance, protein. If somebody doesn't have enough protein in their diet, they can get rhabdomyolysis, their muscles can waste, it causes major nourishment issues. I had a patient one time, Alan, came in, actually, this is interesting. He was my first patient ever when I was in student clinic. And his doctor put him on a no-fat diet for his cholesterol, which first we know today, anybody who keeps up with the medical research, that's crazy. But he was taking, consuming no fat, and his hair was thinning, and his nerves were degenerating. He was losing his memory. Losing, I mean, he w- in a matter of three months, his entire body started wasting away from not eating fat. Now, think about this. Collagen is a macronutrient. It is a protein. We are completely missing this protein in our diet. So again, it's one thing, hey, if you're a little bit deficient in a mineral, like it will affect your body, But if you're, which is a micronutrient. But if you're completely deficient in a macronutrient, your health is really going to suffer. And I think today, a lot of people are suffering from conditions like leaky gut syndrome, chronic joint pain, thinning hair, chronic inflammation, they're struggling with these issues because they're not getting collagen in their diet. And when somebody starts consuming more bone broth, taking a multi-collagen protein supplement, consuming herbs and superfoods that support your body's own collagen, they really start to notice a big difference in their body when that happens. Now, let's take a step back because you're saying macro. And I think people know that the, basically we know the three macros are protein, carbs, and fat. But as we kind of go through that, they, we know it's a much more complex formula that there's an essential amino acids, there's essential fatty acids, fats that we need. Like you said, there's no essential carbs, although we do generally have to make sure we're getting enough energy to support body functions. So we do eat a proportion of those, the way we break them down, whether we go keto or otherwise, we make some decisions on how we're going to allocate those uh, those macros. Uh, whether we're making a decision to make the decision or we're just not making decisions, we're eating what we want, we're still making the decision of what we put in our body. But how is collagen, how is it that you're seeing your collagen is maybe a fourth macronutrient, if we will, but what is collagen and why is it so important? Well, collagen is so important because it makes up one third of all of the protein in your body. Okay. So one third of it. Now I want to say this as well. If you think about if one third, so, so like our muscles, those are made up of more muscle building proteins like branch chain amino acids and methionine. Okay. That's what makes up our muscles. What makes up our ligaments, tendons, fascia, connective tissue, our skin, our hair, our nails, our bones, our discs, our gut lining, our arterial walls, if a pregnant mother is, uh, has a placenta their body's creating, that's made up of collagen. So all of those areas I just mentioned are made up of more than 90% collagen for the most part. And here's another interesting fact. Listen to this. There is more collagen in your bones than calcium and all other minerals combined. And so we don't think about these things, but collagen is so critical for us to be healthy. It's like, why do we think 
calcium is the most important thing for bones because the dairy companies found it was the top mineral in your bones, but there's also magnesium, there's phosphorus, there's, there's all these other things, but because of marketing. That's why we feel like it's so important. But really, today, if we were looking at your bones and what's most important, it's actually collagen. So all that being said, collagen is so important for so many areas of your body. Think about this, for your arteries to be, uh, you want them to be elastic and not hard. When you hear something like calcification of your arteries, that's hardening of your arteries. You don't want that. You want to have soft, supple arteries, which are made of collagen when they're healthy. So all of these areas are just, it's, it's so important. And collagen also will spare muscle. It supports your metabolism. So for fat burning and weight loss, it's important. But just in general, like it, it's important for, it's kind of like the glue that holds your body together. So if you want to be healthy, especially your joints and ligaments and tendons to be healthy as you age, like I had a grandfather who was 96 years old and uh, just passed away last year. But, but up until he was 96, he had joint pain. None of his muscles hurt though, but his joints hurt. And that's because he really, for the good part of his life, up until the last couple of years when I had him start taking it, he really never took collagen. And so again, I think for us, it's the biggest thing we're missing in our diet. And I think if people start using it or consuming a diet, and listen, it's not just taking a collagen supplement, it's more than that. It's consuming vitamin C, which is necessary for collagen production, not just any vitamin C, an absorbable vitamin C that comes from super fruits like camu camu, acerola cherry amla berry or certain foods, broccoli, citrus fruits, also like red bell peppers, you know, so there are certain foods. And then we get into there are other foods that support collagen production that help boost stem cells in the body. And those are really unique types of adaptogenic herbs. And the other thing you want to do not to keep going into this, but you want to protect your body's own collagen production. And there are certain herbs that help you do that matcha green tea, Turmeric powder is amazing for this. Resveratrol found in the skin of blueberries and grapes. But again, collagen is just really important for us because over 30% of all of the protein in our body is made up of collagen. And if you don't get it, think about this. Imagine trying to build muscle like a bodybuilder trying to put on muscle without eating protein. It's hard to do. Like They're not really not going to see results. Versus it's same thing. If you're trying to heal your joints, if you're trying to have a healthy gut and digestive system, if you're trying to have beautiful skin and you're trying to do it without collagen, it's going to be very difficult. And so the, the basis of this is, you know, if we're, if we're just eating standard protein sources of muscle meat, maybe some eggs and things like that, we, we are getting a lot of the amino acids. We're just not getting the right mix of amino acids to optimize our, the collagen production opportunities in our body because we're just not giving it the natural resource to do what it's supposed to do. Well, if we're not getting the right amino acids, because the, the collagen is basically just built out of select amino acids mm -hmm. like lysine and, and others. And so with those amino acids, if we're making sure we're getting those in our diet, we're, we're giving our body the natural resources that it needs to build the body that we have. A hundred percent. And then if we're getting those other nutrients and we're getting those other nutrients, like you said, vitamin C and some of the other things that are basically kind of the, the things that make it all happen so that our body optimizes that production. Exactly. Okay. Now, the interesting thing was I thought of collagen as just a thing and, you know, I, I, <laughs> as a one singular thing, you can talk about the different types of proteins. So we know if we get plant proteins or we get protein from meat or protein from eggs or protein from say whey or casein that they're they're different mixes of amino acids or different structures of them and so they're they're all a little different and they you know what we'd all we call because we're getting all the essential amino acids you know we, we call it the perfect protein but there are multiple types of collagen that I, I was not actually familiar with so could you take a little bit of time to talk about the different types and in particular the ones that you call kind of the five or i guess the six key ones yeah, so I would say when we're talking collagen, I think five in particular, type one, two, three, five, and 10, those are the most important types of collagen we should be getting into our diet. Now, I'm going to bring this up to say there was a principle in ancient Chinese medicine, and that is if you eat the organ of an animal, it supports your organs, if, or if you eat a food that looks like an organ or a system in your body, it actually supports that system. Let me give you an example. A walnut looks like a hemisphere of your brain. Beets are red and actually look like blood. 
And we know, by the way, walnuts are full of omega-3s and choline and all these amazing nutrients that really support brain health. We know beets actually boost nitric oxide in your body, which is super nourishing to your blood. We know that certain things like carrots, you cut it in half, it looks like an eye. And we know, according to thousands of clinical studies, carrots and beta carotene and vitamin A support eye health. Reishi mushrooms look identity to your kidneys and your adrenal glands, so they support your adrenal health. All that being said, there's a principle that when you eat a certain area of a body or organ, so like if you eat a chicken breast, it supports muscle meat because that's the area, that's what it is of a chicken. It's pure muscle. It's going to support our muscles. So with different types of collagen, type one and three collagen make up primarily your skin, hair, nails, bones, discs, and then some of your gut lining. Type 2 collagen makes up your ligaments, your tendons, your connective tissue, and all of your fascia. Type 5 and 10 collagen really helps support areas like your cardiovascular system and your veins and arteries. And so this is also why when people are buying collagen as a supplement, it should always say multi-first. That's going to be the highest quality. They should be buying a multi-collagen protein because if you're only getting one type of collagen, you're not necessarily as strongly possibly supporting all the areas of your body you should. So I really think that, again, when you're doing collagen, like chicken broth contains mostly type 2 collagen, beef and fish collagen contain mostly type 1 and 3, and eggs contain a little bit of collagen or the eggshell membrane, the inner part of the egg eggshell, that contains type 5 and type 10 collagen. And so all that being said, I think ideally we're getting multiple types of collagen because they are subtly going to support other eras. Now, I will say this, type 1 and 3 collagen, different types of collagen can definitely still be used to create other types or areas of collagen in the body. And it's a misnomer for people to think, when I consume collagen, it literally just goes to that area and becomes collagen in my body. What happens when you take a collagen supplement, your body breaks down that collagen into individual amino acids like proline, hydroxyproline, glycine, and then it works with things like vitamin C, and hyaluronic acid, and glucosamine, and chondroitin. And it works with those things to create new collagen within your own body. That's kind of how, how that works. Okay. Yeah, that was actually kind of surprising to me because in the past, you know, I would pride myself on, on being the guy who cooks the turkey for Thanksgiving at my mom's. And so every year I'll buy a, a grass-fed pastured, I mean, you know, grass-pastured turkey, uh, organic turkey for, for dinner. And I'll, I'll cook the turkey and, and I'll take all the bones and I'd make a bone broth. And then when that wasn't available to me, and I'll, and I'll admit, I wasn't getting my three servings a day, but I would have bone broth every once in a while. And then when that would run out, I'd then go to the market and, I, you know, the farmer's market and I'd buy chicken feet. You know, I'd make, again, make some uh, bone broth. I didn't realize, though, that I, I was actually only touching on a small portion of the, of the collagen benefits that I could have gotten and that I should have also probably been buying some beef bones as well to make some beef broth, a bone broth uh, as well. I, I didn't realize that I was miss, still missing out on an opportunity, just not having that full understanding and appreciation of the different types of uh, collagen. Yeah, you know, it really is crazy how, I'll just say this, you know, I, like I, I've taken so many supplements and, and I've eaten very, very healthy for a long time, but I could still notice a difference when I started this collagen diet. You know, when I started doing all the research and reading up on these ancient, like ancient diets. And if you look at Japan today, they have one of the most simple diets in Okinawa, Japan. The top foods they consume on a regular basis are fish broth, rice, and, and fish. They consume a lot of green tea as another one. But, but those are three of their top, top foods. It's, it's fish and fish broth, it's rice and it's green tea. And I want to mention too, you know, what's so amazing about fish broth, it's loaded with collagen and so is, and, and fish is full of omega, you know, has these healthy fats like the omegas. And then you've got matcha, which is one of the most protective herbs on the planet. And they just consume a lot of herbs. They also consume seaweed, which also is good for collagen production. So sometimes people wonder, I don't know if you've heard people talk about this. I have a friend of mine who is, he is Asian and he talks about how all his relatives, like even when they're, you know, his uh, grandfather is uh, 70 and he's like, he looks like he's 40, like very, very young. And I said, you know, a lot of times people will say, sometimes Asians look younger than other nationalities. And he said, well, I think the biggest reason is their diet. He said, in the Asian diet today, especially in Japan, 
He said, you know, the amount of bone broth, the amount of matcha green tea, seaweed, these collagen boosting supplements they consume every day is very, very high. So I know it might be other things as well, but I just thought that was interesting. In Asia, the amount of, that's what I, as I did all my research, they probably consume the diet that is friendliest to collagen production and collagen protection than any diet there on the planet. And so anyways, I, uh, I think that if somebody is looking to see a big turnaround in their health, following a full-on collagen diet is really going to help. Yeah, and, and I think the other thing you, to go back to what you said is that uh, the Okinawans are, are probably eating so much more like their ancestors than the American is today relative to our ancestors. Exactly. It's an ancestral diet. It's one of the closest, if not the closest that I can think of. You know, when you look at the blue zone diets, if you've ever read any of the articles or books there, it's really interesting because really that's what I would say sets them as apart as cultures is they're eating as close as close to their ancestors. And listen, not all their diets are the same. You know, their diets are different. The one common denominator is they're all eating real food. Uh, and they're all active. They're moving. They also practice a lot of spiritual or sort of faith. Like it might be a different faith, but they're also practicing things that are faith based, community based. It's really amazing when you look at what supports lifespan. But those are, you know, those are all factors. Now, in the book, and, and you, we've talked about this a little bit here, there are other nutrients that we would want to consume just to make sure we're, we're setting our body, priming our body to have what it needs to, to be successful in building the collagen and using the collagen that we're taking or eating. Can you talk about some of those? Other, I mean, you've talked about a matcha and some others. Can, can you talk about those and, and how they're helping this process? Yeah. So for starters, let me hit on three categories. We have foods that protect collagen. We have foods that boost collagen. And we have foods that just generally help your body create new and healthy tissues. So first, the foods that protect collagen. These are going to be high Uh, Foods that reduce oxidation, and so it's going to be antioxidant-rich foods. I'm talking berries to start. Blueberries, raspberries, blackberries will be very high on the list. One of my super favorite superfruits, goji berries, will be high on that list. Acai berry, maki berry. But doing berries are going to be fantastic for protecting your body against collagen degradation. I talked about matcha green tea and other forms of green tea. Matcha, very high in antioxidants. It also contains a compound called EGCG, which has anti-cancer properties, but matcha really high up on that list. I'm also going to throw on that list foods that tend to be like dark blue, dark purple, dark green. So even like spinach and chard, green leafy vegetables, they're going to help protect your body. But I would say those antioxidant rich foods, especially herbal teas and berries are going to be the ones you can just do on a regular basis. So for breakfast, maybe you do a collagen smoothie with one cup of berries, one scoop of a multi-collagen protein, a little bit of almond milk or coconut milk. That's a perfect anti-aging smoothie to have in the morning where you're going to get some of those superfoods. And then maybe a glass of green tea in the morning as well. That's going to help. Now, some of the foods that are going to help your body in protecting collagen are going to be those foods that reduce inflammation as well. So Turmeric is going to be very high on that list. Turmeric contains a compound called curcumin, which reduces inflammation. Interestingly as well, it also can support collagen production because it has a compound called tumorone, which supports your body in creating more stem cells. Now, along with that, some of my other favorite anti-inflammatories that can help will be rosemary. Also contains rosemary acid, which is great. Ginger root, another fantastic one. Another one that's great, CBD oil. CBD oil also has anti-inflammatory properties. And then any food that's going to have omega-3s, wild-caught salmon, other fish like mackerel and tuna, grass-fed beef, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, but those omegas along with those anti-inflammatory herbals, those are going to really help with reducing inflammation and preventing collagen degradation and breakdown. And last but not least is this, this category of super herbs and foods that support your body in creating stem cells. And that tends to be the ones that really are known also as adrenal tonics and that lower stress hormones. Uh, Rishi mushroom is amazing. Ashwagandha, which was an Ayurvedic herb that's used today, especially to treat hypothyroidism, really is incredible. I'll also throw out there herbs like astragalus, rhodiola, rosea. But at the top of the list, I would put reishi mushroom and ashwagandha. Those two in particular help lower lower stress hormones. They support stem cell production. 
And two of the best out there are reishi and ashwagandha for stem cell production. Now, so we get these nutrients and we kind of, so we're, we're changing this. We're getting these as a part. Like, so we have our, our smoothie in the morning or we're, we're now going to incorporate some of these other foods in our, our daily repertoire, our daily menu. And, and you have meal plans. I think that's one of the cool things about your book is that it, it doesn't just say, here's the information, go forth and do it. You actually have meal plans and, and some ways that we can do this. But what are some basic ways that we can just ensure that we're getting enough collagen each day? Yeah, so I would say for starters, to make sure you're getting enough collagen every single day, one, take a collagen supplement or a bone broth protein supplement. You want to supplement with it. So for myself, hey, maybe if I'm having a big bowl of chicken broth that day, you know, maybe you don't need to. No, I still do. In fact, I recently talked to uh, Dr. Joseph Mercola, who's a, who's a friend of mine, and he's a... Uh, um, him and myself run two of the largest natural health websites in the world. And I asked him, I said, Dr. Joe, how how much collagen do you consume a day? And he said, I consume 60 grams. That's the equivalent of three to six servings every single day. And so that being said, I consume at least two, so I consume about 30 to 40 grams a day myself. So I'm getting collagen every day. And I want you to think about this. If one third of the protein in your body is made up of collagen, if you're like, I'll share for myself, actually, I consume about 40 grams a day. And so with that, like I consume about 120 grams of protein a day myself. One third of all my protein intake is collagen. And that's what it should be. Just like people have heard this balance of omega-3 and omega-6 fats, you know, like you're supposed to have about between a one-to-one and one-to-four ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fats to have healthy levels. The same goes for collagen building proteins to muscle building proteins. You need a balance. So that being said, every person on the planet should be consuming, if you're not consuming bone broth, a large serving every single day, you should be getting collagen protein. And what I do is I do one scoop of a bone broth protein. The reason I do bone broth protein in addition to a collagen protein is bone broth protein contains its bone broth in powder form. And it also has hyaluronic acid, glucosamine, chondroitin. These are compounds that support collagen production in our own bodies. And so I think they're critical for that reason. So I do one scoop of bone broth protein, one scoop of a multi-collagen protein, and that's what I use to get my collagen every day. Now, in addition to that, like this uh, yesterday, I made a big bowl of what I call immunity soup. And what I put in there was two big jars, probably about 30, 30 grams or so, probably equivalent to like six cups of bone broth. I put in some chicken thighs. I did a big bag of kale. I did cauliflower, I did shiitake mushrooms, and I did miso. I did this chickpea miso I put in there. And sometimes I'll do also, I'll put in some garlic, a little bit of sea salt, and some, sometimes some white beans. And I did this big bowl of immunity soup. Anyways, all that being said, it tastes amazing, but I'm also getting chicken broth in that meal as well. So I think everybody, the best place to get collagen, Number one is going to be just as a supplement because a lot of us are just not getting it daily. Number two is do it as a chicken broth or a bone broth, like a chi- like a real homemade chicken vegetable soup. But I would do a combination of a multi-collagen protein in your smoothies, in your coffee, in your tea. It's, it's very close to like, it's pretty much a tasteless powder. And in addition to that, getting just chicken broth and beef broth. But those are the, those are the best places to, to be getting collagen. Well, this is this is definitely the time of year to be eating immunity soup because of the flu and right. everything else is going around. I just met with a, a business colleague and he was um he was coughing at the table and I'm like, oh man, I gotta I gotta go do something here, uh, so I don't k- take it with me. But yeah, so definitely this is good and that recipe is in the book, by the way, so you can check that out yep. there. So we take the soups, we do that, and I'll tell you, you actually convinced me. I, I, I actually went out and bought a couple of things of, of collagen powder to take back with me to Panama, and I will definitely be looking for opportunities to make more bone broth. We, we have some limited resources with some of the things that are available to us on the island, but I'm, I'm going to step that up a good bit, absolutely. I define wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What are three strategies or tactics to get and stay well? Oh, wow. Well, I think people want to take care of their their body, their mind, and their spirit. So I'm going to start off here. One of the things, ways I start every day for myself is doing what I call my spiritual triathlon. 
And so I wake up in the morning and I spend time just getting grateful, saying everything I'm grateful for. And I know everybody has a different religious background, but for me, like I just praise God. That's how I start my morning and say what I'm grateful for. Number two, I read a book to help me grow. And so this year I'm reading a lot on leadership. I'm reading a lot on spiritual growth. And so I read either my Bible or like a John Maxwell book or Simon Sinek, some book on leadership. And then I'll spend some time the next little bit and I'll visualize and I'll meditate or pray. Okay. So that's what I do. I do my spiritual triathlon and it's, it's gratefulness, it's reading, and then it's spending some time in prayer and meditation. And I'll tell you, when I do that, Alan, I just, it really changes my day. Like I'll read something about love and I'll think, how can I love others better? And love is sacrificing yourself. It's serving others. It's giving. So I'll think about how can I serve and be kind? And so that's how I start my day every day. And the, the second thing they can do, and I want to challenge everybody to do this, is a lot of times people try and change everything at once. Here's what I would say. If you want to be successful in your health, and you, so this is something everybody can do, just change breakfast. Think about this. If you just change breakfast, you're changing one third of your diet. That is a huge step. And if you can do that all year, you're going to see a transformation in your health. And I recommend that everybody do what I do for breakfast, and that's do a collagen boosting smoothie. Three simple ingredients. One cup of berries, one scoop of multi-collagen protein, and one cup of coconut milk or almond milk. That's what I do, Alan, every morning for breakfast, and I feel incredible. I've had people follow that recipe, and they've said no other meal that they've ever changed to have they noticed that big of a difference in their health. Three easy ingredients. Now, hey, if you want to spice it up and add some other things, I'll add in some cinnamon sometimes or pumpkin pie spice. I'll add in a handful of spinach to get some greens or a green superfood powder. Sometimes I'll add in other things. But that being said, three simple ingredients, berries, collagen, almond milk. That's it. And so if people can make that change, that's going to be huge. So eat a good, clean, healthy breakfast. And number two, I would say change your mindset to food is medicine. This is the message I have preached for years, almost since the beginning of my career, is that if you think about when you're eating, not what's going to satisfy your immediate desire, but what is going to be as a medicine to your body. And listen, this can be different for different people. In fact, Alan, I don't believe that there's one diet for everybody. I do believe, though, that most people, generally speaking, are collagen deficient. We're missing collagen in our diet. And I think if people can follow the diet plan that I have in my new book, The Collagen Diet, where I outline collagen, how to eat collagen pancakes, collagen chocolate chip cookies, collagen brownies. You know, but I, I, these recipes are made with things like almond flour, coconut flour, simple homemade ingredients. They're going to help people heal. I think that would go a long way as well. So I would say, again, if people want to change, work on your spiritual and mental health through doing that spiritual triathlon. Number two, just change breakfast to that collagen boosting smoothie. And number three, change your mind to focusing on food being your form of medicine. And what I found too, Alan, is that, you know what? Like, I'm not taking any foods from you. I think if you have the mindset of, like in my book, I teach people, it's not that you can't have cookies. It's you just need to use a different type of flour. It's not that you can't use oil. I'm just going to recommend avocado oil, coconut oil, ghee, and olive oil or grass-fed butter. like Those are what I'm going to recommend. And so I teach people how to make easy swaps to collagen-boosting foods, to healing foods that help them live longer, happier lives. And so I would say those would be the three takeaways that I would uh, take action on. Thank you. So Dr. Axe, if someone wanted to learn more about you, learn more about this book, The Collagen Diet, or the other books that you have, where would you like for me to send them? You know, hey, I encourage everybody, check out my uh, Instagram page. It is uh, Dr. Josh Axe on Instagram. Also, my website, draxe.com. You can just search, go to draxe.com. And you can also just search my name on Google. Start searching Dr. Axe Collagen Diet. You can go to amazon.com as well. I just wrote a new book. Check out the new book there. But yeah, I would just search my name on Amazon, search my name on, on Google. And I think you'll uh, find a lot of uh, exciting things on both of those resources, along with Instagram and Facebook. And I'll have a, a link to that on our website, 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 419. So Dr. Axe, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. Hey, Alan. Thanks for having me.
All right. We are a whole month into the year 2020. Kind of crazy how fast this first month, uh, January, just flew by. But now it's February, and I'm happy to announce that I'm opening up three slots for one-on-one clients at 40 Plus Fitness. So you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash apply, and that'll send a message to me to let me know that you're interested, and we can have a conversation about rather one-on-one trainings for you. With one-on-one training, you get everything that you would get from a personal trainer except counting the reps, and that makes it very cost-effective. I have an app, so you'll have workouts that'll be given to you through your app. You'll have constant contact with me with messaging and email through the app. So again, go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash supply to learn more about working with me at 40 Plus Fitness. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Aliza Sherman and Dr. June Chen and discuss their book, Cannabis and CBD for Health and Wellness. Until then, have a happy and healthy week.